Welcome to Build with Rob. I am Rob Deerdeck, founder and CEO of the Deerdeck Machine, a one of a kind venture creation studio where we systematically fuse art, science, and magic to manufacture amazing companies. Uh, on this show, uh, we love to talk about all things venture creation, all things entrepreneurialism. Uh, a lot of times we will have guests that are our founders and partners, our do or die or partners that we're building companies with. Uh, we will also uh, have people that come on the show and ask different questions about their venture, their business, their idea, sometimes questions about their life, uh, because it's what I love to do. I love just uh, sharing the knowledge that I've created and, and my insight um, when I look at an opportunity or a potential business, I love just picking it apart and talking it with different entrepreneurs. It's just something I really, really enjoy. And in today's episode is a is a special version of that. Um, you know, rather than just taking submissions from the website and then inviting people onto the show, today we actually invited some of the entrepreneurs in the UCLA. Uh, School of Bi Anderson School of Business uh, Venture Accelerator Program to come on and, and and share their business concepts with me and let me sort of give um, my advice on on some things I think maybe they should think about maybe help them with some of the challenges that they're in the middle of and you know UCLA is has an incredible entrepreneurship program it's it's literally the very best I think in all of college you know I think Anderson is just you know, just first class, top notch, and and even this venture accelerator that they have uh, is truly you know one of a kind and and proven to be extremely successful and and helpful to young entrepreneurs. You know, um, you know beyond giving them resources and and sort of the knowledge share and a place to sort of build their companies, uh, an actual physical place to build uh, their companies in the early stage. You know, they really give them mentorship and access to to people like myself uh one of my good friends rod kurtz is actually a, a a a entrepreneur in residence with them and he's constantly helping them evolve their pitches and the story for their brands and in different aspects but it, it's just a really amazing program um you know they've had 73 companies over the past four years raised nearly 150 million in financing, you know, I, I, it's just absolutely incredible. Two of those have been acquired, you know, so it, it's, it's a program that I always want to support and, and be close to, um, just because, you know, I, as someone who was not educated as an entrepreneur, you know, have, have so much, uh, respect for what Anderson does to develop entrepreneurs and ultimately support them, you know, and it, it begs the question, begs the age-old question uh, for a lot of people uh, that are finishing up high school and have entrepreneurial visions, uh, should I go to college or should I start a company? To college or to not college? Um, and it's not a simple answer, you know, and, and I think for every individual, um, the answer is different. You know, uh, for me, it was much different in the sense that, you know, I became a pro skateboarder. You know, I quit high school after my junior year and started my first company uh, a year after that, you know, and I, I, I had an unfair advantage in the marketplace, right? I did a deal with a manufacturing company and I was able to design a complete business, the Orion Aluminum Company. Uh, it's the trucks for skateboards. Um, but I, I didn't know a lot about business in that that time frame. I knew about brand creation and knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and was able to create and build a business at, you know, 17 years old because I had the backing of an operator. Uh, if I would have tried to build that business on my own, fresh out of high school, I would I, no chance, no chance, you know? And, and even as I began to evolve and and dabble in all different types of companies and begin to learn business. It was always from this place of you, you know, hundred percent, uh, re like reactive learning. Like you just you make a mis you you do constant mistakes, do constant dumb things that that you have to learn from because you just don't have any education or any knowledge base as it relates to being an entrepreneur. 
and you know, I, I think depending on who you are, you know, if you want to take the journey of becoming an entrepreneur, that that going to business school will always be a great option. You know, I think a lot of people would say, oh, you got there's so much to learn when you build a company. And it's true, you know, like actually running, building and operating a company is extraordinarily complex. You'll never actually learn it uh, or understand it till you do it. That's just a fact. And, you know, but the truth is, you know, if you went to college, your knowledge base to actually go and build that company is going to be so much um, deeper and you're going to have a much richer foundation than if you didn't go to college, you know, and, and to me, you know, I don't, I don't regret that I didn't have uh, an education that laid the foundation for my business knowledge because, you know, I learned it the hard way over like 20 years. You know, I learned it the hard way over 20 years. Uh, the stuff that I could have le learned in college over four years took me 20 years to learn in the streets uh, and, and, and making and losing millions of dollars along the way. Now, it, you know, I, I say that kind of jokingly, but I, I just believe there's, there's a huge benefit in building a great baseline of knowledge in all things business. And you can get that from college. You know, do I think you can um, be a really smart, driven individual and and build that same knowledge as you're developing and building your own brand. I believe that too. You know, I think uh, Matt Wan, who we built Momentous with, is is a perfect example of that. You know, you know, he left um, Harvard after a year uh, to to continue as the CEO of Momentous and build the company and and he'll tell you himself like when he decided to no longer go to school and run the company he, what he thought he needed to understand to build that company was you know this very narrow thin line of what he thought creating and operating a business looked at and then 3 years in he now fully understands how much he did not know. And even further, he understands how much he has left to learn, you know, and, and I think that's the truth with almost any anything that you're ever going to do. It is that sort of process where it seems so easy when you can only see it in sort of a narrow lens. And then once you get into it and really begin to understand it, boom, boy, you see everything that you don't know. And it's an, it's an extraordinary experience, but again, that is the beginning of the journey. That's when you really settle in and begin the process of learning all aspects of what you need to learn to create a successful business and be a successful entrepreneur. And, and again, there's no right way. You know, a lot of times it's circumstance, you know, like you don't have the means to go to college. You know, it, it's a lot of times it's it's your, an idea is presented to you that you're so passionate about. and You just want to take on, you know, and, and you really want to learn it. Sometimes you have better resources. Um, you know, it's there's there's no right answer to it. But, you know, for me, when I think about, you know, my children, uh, you know, who, you know, you know, God bless, they're five years old, so they really shouldn't be thinking about this. But my son, you know, we're already talking about business, you know, what type of company he wants to do and what does he want to do. She said, Dad, I want to do a water bottle company. I said, okay, son, well, how are you going to make that water bottle different? He said, I'm going to put dinosaurs on it. And I said, son, that's it. That's your value prop. I got a water bottle with dinosaurs. You know, so when I think about him developing and wanting to be an entrepreneur, in my heart of hearts, like, I would like him to go to UCLA and go to Anderson, you know, because I know that, like, hey, you got a whole lifetime to grow and evolve, and the better your foundation is when you finally go um, to launch your business, like, the better um, your knowledge base is to create that business, uh, the less painful and less scary it's going to be as you're going through the valley of death and learning all these things that you just don't know. Now, I say that um, because I you know, love UCLA, love Anderson and the program, but odds are I'm going to get the same karma that Mark Wan got 
when his, you know, prodigy son gets accepted to Harvard after a high school of like just, you know, straight A's. And he's like, I'm out. I want to build this supplement company with Rob, you know? Uh, yeah. So odds are like, I'll be like, son, you should go to college. You'd be like, you quit high school, dad. And it'll be like, you're right. How much money do you need? Let's build a company, you know? So, uh, there's no telling what it would be, but, but again, I think to anybody, um, whoever is considering it, um, or debating, should I do it? Should I not? I would always lean towards learning as much as you can while you can ahead of building a business because it'll it'll save you a lot of pain and sort of, you know, that that evolutionary pain of not understanding what you're doing and that you've got to learn to get better at. I just think there's a lot of foundational, fundamental things that you can learn in college. Okay, speaking of college, we have a great show today. We have a, a, a handful of entrepreneurs from the Venture Accelerator at UCLA Anderson and and just really smart, really cool ideas. Um, and again, I just just love connecting with young entrepreneurs and, and sharing my insight. So without further ado, let's get into this very special episode of Build with Rob featuring entrepreneurs from the Venture Accelerator at UCLA Anderson. I am Jeff Gum. I am the founder of Single Life. I grew up in Pennsylvania, did my undergrad at UCF in Florida, and then was a Navy SEAL for 10 years. I founded Sunga Life as an active Navy SEAL in July 2016 after traveling to Brazil with the Gracie family, created the UFC and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I saw everyone wearing these Sungas, thought they were awesome, bought a bunch, and started wearing them all over the world. I self-funded the company with my Iraq re-enlistment bonus and then started at UCLA Anderson, had a lot of growth there, did the entrepreneurship pipeline and was able to use all the resources to grow. Did over 500,000 in 2020 and on track to do over a million in 2021 in sales. The goal here is to become a household name, have Sungas become popular in the US, and then, uh, but to have all this really cool patriotic freedom inspired swimwear and athleisure that just puts out a really positive message, supports veterans and law enforcement and all the great people who continue to serve. Jeff Gum, welcome to Build with Rob. How are you, my friend? I am excellent. I am excellent. Thank you for having me. Great to connect with you on here. Yeah, look, I, first of all, it, without further ado, uh, thank you for your 10 years of service as a Navy SEAL. Okay. The the honor was mine. I really enjoyed it. And uh, really, really great to talk to you on here. Actually, I saw you speak a couple of years ago at Young and Reckless about your entrepreneurial journey and everything. Nick Sanastaso is a good friend of mine. I went with him and he spoke as well. So it's really cool seeing, uh, you know, go from because going from an operator into a businessman, it was like kind of similar to what you've done going from a skater and then a having your show and then going into building businesses and everything. So really incredible. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. I love, I love how like the world kind of works. You know what I mean? It's yep. like, it's like at, at this young and reckless random thing, then you end up in the UCLA Excel venture accelerator that I'm somehow connected to. And then next thing you know, boom, here we are together on build world's, with Rob. World's quad. You know, and, and look, so so give us like, you know, the one minute overview of your company, uh, just so the listeners kind of understand. Absolutely. So I was a SEAL for 10 years, um, kind of fought for the freedom of our country. And then I went down to Brazil with the Gracie family, saw everyone wearing Sungas down there, thought they were awesome. And I was like, I need to share this with the US and uh, created Sunga Life. It was my first product, was wearing them anytime I go to the beaches or go off sailing in Croatia, anytime I was doing something cool. And I was like, I need, I need to make this in the US and then start making other products that go along with the brand, board shorts, silkies, which are like army or marine PT shorts. And except I created them with my own patterns and everything, started making women's swimwear and, and start marketing it. Started, uh, I'm really connected with a lot of different philanthropies where like seals and special operators save the coral reef, uh, swim the Hudson River to raise money for homeless veterans train amputee and spinal cord injury veterans out of Dallas, Texas, and then redeploy them to the ski slopes and surf slopes. So 
um, have everyone wear Sunga Life while we do all these epic things that are kind of inspirational at the same time for our marketing and also to just be able to help these foundations at the same time and give an inspirational message. Yeah, look, I, I think it's really incredible. And there's there's no doubt, man, you are committed to the philanthropy side. Uh, you know what I mean? And and because you're supporting a, a lot of different, a variety of different ones. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like to say no. Yeah, <laughs> look, clearly you don't like to say no because it's all, you know, uh, the other one that's really special is training the the injured vets like uh, like another. What's the name of that one? It's the Adaptive Training Foundation. My friend Dave Vabora founded that. It is it is unbelievable. Yeah, it's like you know just just seeing the the work that you're doing with that is is truly extraordinary. And I think it's it's part of your blessing of the success you've been able to create uh, in, in leaping out into creating your own venture and what you've been doing with Sunga Life. It's like you know what led you to end up in the venture accelerator program. So um, I, I founded my company as an active SEAL. I didn't quite know what I was doing yet. You know, it takes some time to learn to learn a business and e-commerce. And I had friends who had done their MBA at Wharton, and I saw the success that they were having. They lived in Los Angeles, and I I knew UCLA had a great entrepreneurial program, and it was probably a better place for being around kind of influencers and celebrities, getting people to wear your brand and. So I was like, UCLA seemed, it was the first place I applied to, uh, went through the entrepreneurial pipeline there, built my team with other MBA students and uh, kind of went into the different accelerators that they have. And they've just provided such incredible support to help me like grow and scale this company. When I first joined UC or started UCLA, we might've been doing like 50,000 in revenue. Now we're going to be doing over a million dollars this year. So it's been a uh, really helpful yeah, look, I I I think you're a, you're a testament to to the program and what what the uh, Anderson is, is capable of doing for for people, especially you know the the truth is is you you really learn how to be if you don't go to school you learn how to be an entrepreneur while you're being an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Like yes. it is a it's a difficult sort of pathway to go through the pain of of discovering all these things that you don't know while you need to know them while you're building a business. You know, I, I found it pretty interesting, even the the idea of, you know, you've you've marched your way into the return on ad spend drudgery uh, and, and the pain of the iOS shift. And ultimately, oh, yeah. you know, everybody, everybody went through it. You know what I mean? It's not, it, it's not, it's a, it, you know, just you, but it, it was really everybody in the D2C world who was really, uh, you know, enjoying the fruits of uh, that 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 beautiful ROAS, uh mm -hmm. that all got got hammered by that. You know, so you know, I I think the the fact that your growth and evolution in the program, your passion for um, not only you know, because there's a fun and uh, you know, forget about just the heroic side. There's the fun side to you that I think comes out inside the brand. You know, I I think Absolutely. that that positivity and that optimism that that you live in. You know, and and then on top of that, you support all these great causes behind it. I I really love it. I love the idea of like the secret of happiness is freedom. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I I just think like that is the energy of your brand is extraordinary. And the secret, and the secret of freedom, freedom is courage. It's courage. It's all encompassing right. and uh, being able to continue to serve. Yeah. And, and I just think, I think you have uh, built a lot of soul into the concept that goes, you know, beyond just the philanthropy side, but, but that idea that like the happiness that comes with freedom, you know, the, the, the courage that's needed to actually go and get it. And and then still have fun, like living is is the vibe that that I really really enjoy about what you've created. So so I'm curious, like what what are some of the challenges and and things that you're in the middle of right now as you continue to scale the business? Yeah, a, a major thing right now is kind of growing the team a bit. Um, I've I've done that at UCLA. I took on a business partner, Warren Warren Lee who's really been good at taking over a lot of the technical things. He's more like building the financial models, doing more of the analytics, uh, improving the operations. It leads me to be able to go out and do more of these kind of epic challenges, uh, get more of my friends and kind of some influencers to, to wear the company. I got all you know kinds of UFC fighters and 
been on Mike Tyson's podcast talking about single life with him. And so it free- frees me up to do all this while, while he's been doing that. We need to build the team a lot more. I kind of contract a lot of people with our customer service and the warehouse and manufacturing and the, these different aspects are our advertisers, but uh, want to be able to build the team out more. Yeah. Uh, and look, it's, to it's, take it to the next level. And it's, it's the thing that's the, the hardest to do and hardest to decide when to do it. But, you yeah. know, I, I think when I was like, just kind of watching your video and, and looking at the website and watching the different stuff with you, my immediate like thought was like, man, he needs an operating partner. He needs yeah. somebody that's yep. that's focused on on just making sure everything's flowing and let him go out and be the face and the guy marketing and and, and I think you um, can be the hero for the story, the hero for the community and and I do think it is you getting in front of so many different people and telling that story uh, because I think a lot of people will connect with it. It's now a matter of how many people can you actually get to it and and I think. Yep. I think what'll be super helpful for you is to tell that story, get somebody that can really build an influencer program for you, you know, and, and I think you can outsource that, but you want people saying why they wear it uh, because of the cause, co- like who made it and, and the cause behind it. You know, I, I think it's a, a really like, you know, irresistibly shareable concept that with the right group of influencers, people will buy to support you and, and your sort of mission of what you hope to to do with the company, you know? Yeah, that's been something we actually just launched in the last month. We were having a lot of different people posting about it, all this user-generated content. And so we created, it's called the Sunga Squad. And so people get rewarded for posting and tagging uh, Sunga Life and everything and hashtagging it. And the yeah big big goal is to like really grow that out to over a thousand people um, that are kind of posting about it monthly and yeah. just continue to grow there. Yeah, and look, and and I think you like as you, you know, the the great balance you're going to have to have is like the hires versus revenue, when to do it, yeah. when not to do it. Exactly. You know, because you know the scariest part at your stage is taking on more overhead, you know, yep. and, and then now you're, you're really against sales where having like the ROAS dip on you in a month in the middle of summer, when yep. it should be your biggest month, exactly. it's it going to be a lot more painful, uh, when you got, you know, two or three bodies in there that you're responsible mm-hmm. for paying. But, you know, have you, have you, have you gone out to look at in getting investment capital at this point? So I used, uh, actually I used my Iraq reenlistment bonus to fund it almost, and we've been profitable the last two and a half years and, and I used cash flow just to grow, but now we're going through an SBA loan right now. Hopefully we have that in about a month or two and that'll give us a little bit of breathing room with the hires and everything. Want to be able to get, get the sales and valuation to a little bit of a higher level and then hopefully take on like an investor and st- strategic partner around that point. So that's like a big goal, maybe around six to 12 months from now. I didn't even know what investment capital was till I was like 38. You know what I mean? Like I, I had just spent my entire life. I didn't even, the concept of getting somebody to like invest in your business was cr- ludicrous mm-hmm. to me till deep into my thirties. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, look, I, I think it's the, the way you've done is the right way to do it. Um, and it's, it's creates so much value and clarity on what you would ever use that money for. And, and, you know, if you can get loans and get debt and, and not need, uh, to give up, uh, equity and still grow the business, I would go do that if you can, you know, it's, it's really just about the clarity on, on how that money can turn into more money. You know, I think that's totally. as long as you keep that focus um, and, and always run it lean towards profitability, uh, I think is, is probably more in your nature and it's going to keep you much more happy. And the Holy grail for you is you can just go out uh, in your little, you know, silkies all silkied up, just swimming everywhere, just living life yep. to the fullest with a and bunch of my friends, with a bunch of your friends, you know, swimming across the Hudson, just like jumping on top of a warship to get a workout in, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever the vibe is and <laughs> yeah, have a nice, sustainable, profitable business that allows you to continue to push and drive that mission. I, I just think that's, that's, that's what your goal I think should be as opposed to ever ultimately needing 
uh, investment capital, unless it's like pure, like beyond strategic. I would almost say like a super wealthy ex Navy SEAL, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or ex military guy that's like, hey, I just love like his family offices investing in other uh, veterans that he connects with type of thing, you know? So, um, rather than getting caught in that wheel of like, okay, now you got to build this to sell, you know, you, you definitely, yeah. if you do eventually take on capital, you know, you, you want to find like a high net worth individual that, that can split the profits with you rather than, than, you know, needing you to go sell this company one day, which is, would, would be my advice to you, you know, and you got another question for me. What's that? Yeah, um, I want to see um, what do you do to make sure you're giving your energy to make what makes the most impact and that the different projects you work on are synergistic? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm and, and I, I, I can see it in you from just the amount of stuff you do. Yeah. And and I know that you think, ah, oh, I just spent a whole, like I spent eight days out here doing this thing and did it even give me any return on that energy towards the company. I don't even know if I got any exposure for it. I just, you know, I, I just took this time away from it. And, and I think as you grow and evolve, you want to get better and better at that. You know, it, it's like, you know, I, I like to refer to it as ROE, return on energy, right? Yeah. And it's like, and that comes in a lot of different forms, right? Like it, you, it might just be awareness. It might be relationships. It, it might be different things, but you definitely want to get to a place that you have a plan, a clear plan of growth for the business. And then everything you decide to put your energy into that there is a clear push towards adding to that plan. You know, it, it's when you when you uh, don't say no to something that um, you're unsure of its impact on your business, but you just ah, oh, we'll go give it a shot and see. You know, I, I I think that's when you do a handful of those, and next thing you know, you're 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 constantly trying to catch up again. Right. Because depending on how far away you got to get uh, uh, from the business while being in another activity, another adventure, something that's supporting it, then you got to you got to get back into the mindset of getting back into the company and everything that's going on and getting reorganized on that sort of aspect. So, you know, for me, you know, I love, you know, managing my energy above everything, you know, and and really making sure that I. Uh, look at sort of the first and second order consequences of when I choose to do something uh, from an energetic standpoint, you know, like even when I plan to like work a night, you know, because some nights I'll plan and work late into the evening, I've got to know I can't have another big day the day behind that because I know if I, you know, do some deep execution work in the evening and then I try to get up at at 430 again and go hard the next day and have another full day of meetings that my decision making is going to be more scattered and less sharp because I put so much effort into to working in, in deeper execution work late into the night. Now, that's a fully optimized next level uh, human being that tracks every aspect of his life and time and is yep. like just looking at like all bits of my existence and like, how am I feeling right now? Am I energetic? Am I on the right path? Am I on the, the way to the vision? Right. That's that's mm -hmm. how I look at it every day. But I, I would learn to to train yourself um, to ultimately master getting the most return on your energy. Right. Because like the more effort you put in and you can see progress in your goals, that's where that's where that extra level of excitement and push and motivation and belief comes from. Right. Because you, you just never want to get into the place where the business slows down and then you question your decisions, you yeah. know, because think of think of how you felt. Uh, in in, you know, September, August versus of how amazing it felt in June. You know, when it's like, man, we're just going to grow. And then when it like, when you got, when it dumped, it's like, you probably questioned every decision you made uh, up until that point. Right. And it's, it's, you know, really building your life around um, understanding that sometimes your energy is actually tied to the performance of your business. 
and, and making sure that that you put that as sort of the priority of making sure that that your personal energy is put into to growing and moving things forward so that you can allow it to rejuvenate you and be a source of energy than ever being a drain, you know? Yeah, I love, I love all that. And that was kind of something we came up with recently too, where we'll have a whole event calendar where I go and do this event, then this event, but it's there for people to be able to see it. If they go to our website, market it a little bit more so they can come around and be a part of the community more at the same time and potentially do the events with us. Yeah, I love that. I I, I love, you know, you, you know, if you want to build a community, when, when you're doing these events that are for a cause, that are representative of sort of Sangha life and what it means, you know, and, and who you are, man, like, and they get to like basically deliver on that cause by coming and doing like these fun, like activations with you. I think that is like the clearest shot to not only building a big community, but a deeply loyal one, you know? Yeah. So, yep. you know, I, I think when you look at those, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that they, you know, have a return on that energy, right? You don't want to like keep doing them and nobody shows up and you get no awareness. You got to, you got to keep yeah. adjusting and evolving them and find other partners till, till you get them to scale. But I do think that at this day and age, so many benefits. It is people engage in your brand. You're giving back. There's all the content that comes along with it. It's mm -hmm. building community. It, there's so many aspects of it that's worth doing, but make sure um, that you're shaping it and optimizing it and evolving it each time to that to ensure that you you end up getting that return on it rather than than doing the same thing and then not quite delivering on the awareness that you had hoped for, you know. Totally. Thank you. All right. Well, well look, man, it was an absolute pleasure. Again, I, I appreciate you. Uh, I, I appreciate your service. I, I really appreciate what you've created, your energy and 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 am thankful that you came on the show and, and good luck in, in your journey as being an entrepreneur. Thank you so much for having me, Rob. Really appreciate it. And good luck to you with everything you continue to do. All right. All the best. Hi, I'm Victoria Brodsky. I'm 28 years old. I was born and raised in Orangeville, California, which is a small town up north. Um, I went to UC Berkeley for my undergrad and I studied nutritional sciences because I've been always very passionate about nutrition and health and wellness. Drink Light, simply put, is rehydration for when you drink. Um, in 2019, I built this company because I just was really tired of not being able to go out and have a drink with friends because there was just so few options when you go out to properly rehydrate. Our first products and our key products are these two cans with Moonlight and Sunlight. And basically they are made up of a formula that's called an oral rehydration solution. It's literally like a dehydration lifesaver. It will hydrate you just as quickly as an IV would. Tori Brodsky, welcome to Build With Rob. How are you? I'm fabulous. How are you, Rob? Man, I just, I gotta tell you, I love your background, okay? I love that the product is out there. I love that the Anderson Venture Accelerator is is alive in its full form. Because look, I, I would like to believe that, that you are like a prime uh, example of what can be produced and is possible with the with Anderson, you know what I mean? I I, I you know I was I was looking that you were involved in the fully employed MBA program, right? That that yeah. the the FIMBA uh, uh, to to ultimately FEMBA FEMBA yeah. to ultimately learn business, right? And 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 really understand what it means to become an entrepreneur. But if I'm not mistaken, you stood out on your venture and actually created this concept before you got in the program. Yeah, that's right. I started this venture towards the end of 2019, which, uh, as you know, probably was one of the worst times to start a nightlife related uh, product. That's it's it, you wouldn't know what. It, yes, it is. It's probably it's probably the absolute worst time <laughs> to start a Couldn't nightlife product. Worst time. And, and, and tell me about the journey and the vision uh, for Drink Light. So the journey was really that I. I really wanted to create something that allowed people to both go out and have fun, 
but also feel that they could be productive the next day. That it didn't have to be, you know, healthy lifestyle or fun lifestyle. There was something that would promote kind of the combination of both. And, you know, a lot of our, my friends, um, you know, I've, I've got a background in nutrition sciences from UC Berkeley. And so I'm very health forward, but a lot of my friends, you know, would go out and, and fall asleep and not rehydrate. And that's one of the simplest things that you can do after you're drinking to make you feel better and to stay healthy. And I always had like a flask of coconut water or something. I was always prepared, but they weren't. And so I always had, you know, come up with a solution and get extra water bottles and all this stuff. There was no direct solution. And so I thought if there was something that you could actually get on premise while you're at the concert, while you're at the bar, wherever you're drinking at the end of the night or during, you just need to properly rehydrate. Right. And it needs to be with good electrolytes. And so that's why we created drink light and created uh, two two formulas moonlight and sunlight one you drink at the end of your night one you drink in the morning but they're actually the same thing that you can drink them anytime yeah yeah and uh yeah. Hey, and, I, so so let me let me so here's what i find fascinating about the the overall opportunity right N- number one there's like a couple things in your presentation that really stuck out to me that you didn't lock in on um, and, and that was like this oral hydration solution, right? It's, it's this idea that it's like medical grade hydration, right? Yeah. And, and like, I see it in the logo, you know, where you got the little plus on it, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's like, to me, when I start thinking about like hydration as a whole, right? How, how important it is and how it's this sort of overlooked thing and, and, and this idea that you're your education and sort of background and that led to you um, understanding like oral hydration solution is this much medical grade, like the strength of an IV, uh, but it's in a consumable either, either in the powder or in the ready to drink, right? It's it's that sort of action. And, and then this idea of like lightning fast uh, hydration, right? It's like now, right. now to me, when I start thinking about the value proposition of the product, like I start thinking about every person basically uh, needs to go to bed hydrated, right? Because you dehydrate while you sleep and, you know, every person will tell you like the first thing you got to do is get up and drink water, right? And it's like, you know, this concept of like moonlight, sunlight and like anchoring your evening and morning, morning with hydration, I just find like so much broader than just bars and partying, right? Like, you know, every every person, why am I dehydrated uh, most of the day? Because I drink so much coffee, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's like the idea of, of moonlight and sunlight. Um, There's just something super unique and special. And one of the aspects could be, connected to alcohol and be working, you know, as part of what it is. But I also think there's a huge opportunity to just like hydrate people um, with this hydration system, regardless of whether or not you've been drinking. Have you ever thought about it from, from that perspective? Or has anyone ever shared that concept with you? Yeah, absolutely, Rob. Um, They have. And, you know, people do use it other than this one use case. But the reason why I decided to go this route was because you know that making a company and going to market is very difficult, and especially when you're bootstrapped. And so I decided, you know, every other hydration product out there is targeting general hydration. Drink, you know, hydrate all the time, in the morning, at night, after you work out, when you drink. And I thought, there's a market here that's capturable right now that no one else is capturing. And if it's just that market, it's a $1.2 billion opportunity. And that market is just water bottles at nightlife venues. That's it. And so if I'm able to capture that, why not go for the rest? But that's kind of my approach and my go-to-market strategy. And as far as, um, you know, we've, we've gone so far, people like the idea. Yeah. And, and, and what has been the challenge, the, the biggest challenge for you um, as a first time entrepreneur and trying to find, uh, the places to distribute it and acquire those, those, you know, both, 
uh, retailers, that would be the on-site venues and, and consumers if it's direct to consumer. What's been your biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is, well, at this point, it's growth. Yeah. Because the product really does sell itself. Very proud of the product. The formula, the taste, the look of it. People love it. It's very rare for someone to come across Drink Light. I mean, we've had iterations, obviously, and not like it. And so when the product sells itself, then the next thing you have to think about is, how do I go big with this? And that's where I think the biggest challenge is for me right now is growth. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, I, I built the product and now it's like, okay, now I have to go into this business I know nothing about, which is CPG and, and a volume business and figure it out. Yeah. And look, it's one of the hardest possible markets to tackle, you know, and, and it, it's, it's also why we've kind of steered away because it's so capital intensive to, to scale in, in something that I found really fascinating in your deck is that you have a super advisor in Diana Trout. You know, it, it's like, and I would be so, you know, I don't know her personally. I know her husband who is the COO. Uh, Ooh, and, yep. you know, and he's amazing. He's like, you know, one of the most, he's amazing. You know, I, I recently sent him all of my, my uh, the way I track all the data of my life. I have this giant operating manual called the Rhythm of Existence. That's an 80 page operating system for my life. And I just recently sent it to him uh, so that he could take on the machine mindset that Rob Deerdeck has. But I digress. She is an absolute expert and understands the, the space, obviously, more than than almost anybody. I, I'm, I'm curious what like such a great advisor, like how has she and what has she tried to implore in you on what the next steps should be um, in, in order to find that growth? Right. Dinah has been uh, an absolute angel. I chased and chased and chased her until finally she got on the phone with me and she was like in the car with her kids. So I appreciate <laughs> her time. She's the best. And every step of the way, I mean, she was there. She became my advisor, like right when, you know, the pandemic hit. And I said, Dinah, I don't know what to do. Um, help. And she was on board for every step of the way. And the most important thing she's told me in each step is, choose your direction and go for it 100%. Yeah. And so yeah. when we had to switch to the drink mixes, she said, decide and then do it. And that is your business right now. And all you care about is that. And then when we're going back to the cans, I said, Dinah, there's so many new opportunities. I don't know how to focus. She said, pick three things, pick mm. three things to get. You want to get X amount of, account X amount of on-premise accounts, you want to hire one salesperson, pick three things, then go on to the next once you've accomplished that. And she's been super helpful, not only with her beverage industry advice, but also just as an entrepreneur herself, specifically a female entrepreneur. It's been amazing to have her support. Yeah, no, I, I good for you. Good for, man. I, I look, I asked a question. I, I've asked a question, um, not, not really expecting such a thorough answer. Uh, and now it like is so clear to me why they are so successful together as a husband and wife by just how she yeah. mentored you and this, that singular, it got me fired up. I was like, man, I need to be more focused. I need to be sharp because look, I, you know, I think, you know, when it is, this product is really about that one salesperson and those on-premise accounts, right? Like, cause at the, at the end of the day, like in, like you can build sustainability in the business with with a, a a handful of accounts through one salesperson, right? Like it's just a matter of ultimately identifying that individual and, and doing a deal with with someone like that. And it probably is somebody from the alcohol space, you know what I mean? Rather than uh, necessarily somebody from the regular, uh, you know, RTD space. You know, have you looked into hunting down somebody and in, in, from one of the big sales groups in the alcohol space? I have. Yeah. Actually, recently we had a wonderful promotion um, at a bar in Huntington Beach um, and the GM called up the distributor and said, hey, you really need to check this out. So taking one step at a time. And I think at this point in time, how I'm overcoming that challenge of growth is really people. I just need to be in front of the right people. And I think and I just I this is one of my questions, but. I think that's where the magic is, where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, if I meet this amount of people and do this amount of activations and pitch in front of this many people, 
something's bound to happen. And it's going to be that thing that I need to happen for this business. Yeah. And uh, do you believe in the law of attraction? Absolutely. You know, and, and I, and that's what the magic side of business is when I say it, right? It, it's art. Art is like, you've got to create what doesn't exist. You know, there was a, a something, there was not a solution for people that should be hydrated, leaving the bar and getting up in the morning. You put the vision to it. You had to create it. That's the art side. You had to come up with the name, the packaging, the style, the look, the feel, the marketing. The most exciting part is the creation side, right? The science is, hey, you got to be able to like, uh, build the right team, have the right unit economics. You got to be able to find uh, the retailers, the consumers, these fundamental things of business that have to occur uh, for you to have a successful business. The magic is that the unexplainable side, right? It, it is it is like where it is one event leads to one person that's like, oh, he owns you know, uh, 200 bars and he would love to put it in his bar. Like, oh, what? Then another person sees it's there. And, and then some big influencer is like, not going to be, not going to have a hangover and shoots it on their own with earned media. And then all of a sudden, like, what's moonlight? I need to moonlight before I go to bed. Like that's where like the magic occurs because it doesn't matter. You know, there is no such thing as like you write a business plan, you launch a business and boy, it worked. It just doesn't exist like that. Like you literally come up with an idea, you shape, iterate, launch, chaos, shape, iterate, like try, push and boom, something happens. You're like, what? Like, you know, it, it is totally unexpected and it still it hit the number you put in your financial model. But boy, I didn't expect like f for it to come from this direction, right? And to me, you got to hunt magic, right? You, you got to put yourself in a position to get lucky and constantly be working for it to actually happen. And, and to me, it, when you don't know like exactly where the opportunity is, but you understand uh, where the opportunity will come from, meaning, you know, one person that has a relationship with, uh, you know, a, a vendor that could um, give you scale to your business immediately um, is, is what you know you've got to hunt. Now it's now it's a matter of putting yourself in front of so many of those opportunities till one out of nowhere uh, lands on your doorstep and becomes the beginning of of really evolving and building the company, right? Because it's it's you know, until you raise the capital and build the team and, and start to have that, that, that revenue, I think it's, it's, there's a, always going to be a lot of questioning and like, what's the right choice? What should I do? You know, I, 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 you know, I saw like in one of your videos about, you know, practicing belief, you know, I got to yeah. do better. I got to do better to, to like, you know, uh, you know, belief and, and seeing what it is and, and you grow belief, right. And, and you grow belief by, by creating and learning detailed plans and then then making progress towards those goals. Like that's where you're like, oh, I'm doing it now. This is this is where belief is. It's very hard to just like keep the faith without progress towards a goal or a milestone that's going to lead you to finding the success that you know you can create, right? So I, I always say to people that are, like caught in that sort of zone of like of of feeling that way when they're creating or building anything is that you don't just get it over time unless you're super experienced. If this was your third RTD company and yeah. you understood the market and had relationships with all these bars and was like going to introduce this new part, you would just be like, you'd be cruising, right? And that's what experience and founder market fit and, and, and experienced entrepreneurs, that's all the benefits that they get. Uh, versus you now uh, on the front lines of uh, the chaos of basically learning every day all the things that you don't know, you know what I mean, which is uh, part of the process. And, and ultimately, it's the gift that you get forever, you know, because all of these things, you know, every bit of these programs, everything that you're learning th through the accelerator, uh, through Anderson, all this is just adding to your depth of understanding of of what it means to be an entrepreneur and an operator, uh, and and all of it is worth it at 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 all time, you know.
And you had an Nothing. interesting, another interesting question as it relates to to the uh, to being grounded that I thought was interesting. What was your other question? Uh, so that that was one of them, and then the other one was magic, which we already discussed. Yeah, I you know, and and, and tell me again, tell me again the the uh, the other one. I asked personally how you stay grounded because I think there's this constant. Um, there's this constant reality that business can can go away, right? Something could happen, a pandemic. And when all that goes away, what is it that you hold on to that's like most precious to you to kind of, you know, keep you going? It's like, you know what? This is fun. This is awesome. I'm creating something in this world. But even if it all goes away for whatever reason, I still have this. What is that for you? I, I mean, look, I am... You know, I, for me, obviously, I I have an extraordinarily blessed human being um, because I could never be faced with that, right? And and I have this extraordinarily abundant life, and it has so much to do with uh, my amazing wife, my kids, my family, my foundation. But it's also the way that I chose to design my life. Right. I chose to design this this deeply balanced life and I laid out like a foundation that I needed to get to that would would basically be my pillow. Uh, shall I ever fall? I would drift down onto this soft pillow. Right. And I built that over time throughout the years with the intent of that idea of, you know, ever ha putting worry in the back of your mind of what if I part of my life plan was building a foundation that I never had to ever think like that ever again, because that in itself uh, takes a lot of energy, right? Like when you are even in the place of worrying about, um, you know, what to do next or what if this doesn't work, you know, it's like it is the this that sucks the soul out of you, right? It drives you into this place of of feeling, um, you know, like, you know, I, I used to refer to it as take the money and run, right? Like when I would be, when I would be in this, like, you know, before my foundation was set and what it was, it would be like, just, just take what you've earned and go live on an island, right? I, you know, I would always sing, come on, take the money and run when I was in that <laughs> place. And, and it's, it's the reality that, you know, you want to grow your life into a place where that's, um, your foundation is so solid, but you know, I'm, I, I designed my life and it became the vision that I had for it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and part of that is extraordinary love an amazing family, uh, and, and ultimately creating a life where I get up and do what I love every single day and look forward to doing each thing every single day. But it took me many years to grow into that, but I decided mm -hmm. Uh, what that was going to look like, created a plan, and then went out and eventually achieved it. And when you reach it, it's it's you appreciate it so much more and you stay so much more grounded because you are like overwhelmed with gratitude and gratefulness because you're in awe that you actually created reality and that this abundant and happy life by design is what you actually get to live. That is what's possible if you're willing to, to spend the time and energy to design it. And you too, Tori, could grow into that abundant, amazing life. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, and it sounds like that's kind of how you design the businesses as well, right? A hundred percent. Factoring these wonderful businesses that actually work and then it makes it fun. Yeah, look, I, I say it over and over. It, it, business is amazing when it works and it is it is a nightmare and very sad when it doesn't, you know, and, and sure there's a ton of lessons in there and it's as someone that gets to build businesses over and over and learn lessons again and again and again. Um, it's beautiful, but it's different when we have a struggling company and it's the single entrepreneur's only vision and their entire dream tied to it. You know, I, I've, I feel it. I understand it because we only start from zero with every business. So we really understand, um, sort of the cycle of success and including the, the cycle of pain that goes into it, you know, and it's, it's, it's never fun 
when it's not working, you know. Absolutely. All right, well, look, I, I absolutely appreciate having you on here. I, I, I can honestly say, as you stated, it is absolutely delicious. You know, <laughs> like when I cracked it up, you know, I, I let it sit in the fridge all night to make sure I had it nice and cool. And when I cracked it, I, I you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, in a consumable, it's all about taste, you know, and I really think that you have two delicious products. And and really for me, I I, I will, <laughs> even though I track how much I drink and I try to never have more than one drink, I, even with one drink, God forbid I have two, I will be moonlighting and sunlighting every single time I have a drink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I Thank appreciate you. you. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, take take care. care. All right. There you have it. Another episode of Build with Rob, a special episode of Build with Rob with some amazing entrepreneurs from the Venture Accelerator at UCLA Anderson. Thank you, everybody at UCLA Anderson and the Accelerator program for uh, making this happen. Thank you to my man, Rod Kurtz, for setting the whole thing up. Um, thank you. Uh, for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned some stuff. Hope you got some insight. As always, uh, wherever you listen to the podcast, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, you know, get in there and be a part of our community. Talk to each other. Learn from each other. Uh, you want to help us build businesses? Go to DeerDeckMachine.com and become a machinist. If you got an idea, uh, you can pitch us an idea on there too. And who knows, you might end up on this show. Um, but like every great entrepreneur, you got to look out into the future. You got to know that that future is possible and you got to have the heart to see that future become a reality. See it, believe it, do it. Till next time.